Hi everybody, welcome to this video. This is a short video to cover Plex Media Server and Own Cloud Server loaded and running on a Raspberry Pi 3. Now, this, this, this is an image which one can download from our website. Once you extract the image, you write it to a micro SD uh, card. And um, if you want Wi-Fi headless setup, you configure the uh, file on the boot partition for your wireless uh, settings and insert the micro SD card into your Raspberry Pi 3 and boot and connect directly to your network. Alright, so we currently have a micro SD card inserted. Um, it's boot G. Once you've written the image, you will have the DOS partition visible. There's a file called WPA Supplicant Conf example. Uh, one must just edit this file and insert your SSID and your password. Once you've inserted your SSID and password, you can use other WPA supplicant uh, configurations. Um, once you've done your changes, you can save your file. And please remember to rename the file to wpasupplicant.conf. At any point, if you wish to change this, um, one merely creates a new file and the settings will be read on boot of your Raspberry Pi. All right, so with that said, uh, let's now inject micro SD card. Over here we have a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B um, with just HDMI connected. You don't need a console, it is truly headless if you use Wi-Fi and later on there's a menu inside of the boot inside of the image which one can use to configure the networking all right so let's remove the micro SD card and insert it into our Raspberry Pi and power up the Raspberry Pi Allow a couple of seconds for the Raspberry Pi to boot and settle. Alright, at this point the Raspberry Pi would have already connected to the uh, Wi-Fi network. Um, as you can see there's no Ethernet adapter connected, merely just power and a console cable. Alright, one can check one's local DHCP server to identify the IP address or um, if you had a console connected you would be able to see the IP address currently assigned to the Raspberry Pi Wi-Fi. As I have a console connected I can see the IP address that the uh, Raspberry Pi has received and at this point I can connect to the Raspberry Pi. Alright I'm going to open up PuTTY So it's visible. The default uh, usernames and passwords are available in the documentation. All right, so uh, once you've logged in, uh, you'll get the message of the day greeting screen. Once the, uh, when the Raspberry Pi uh, initially boots, uh, the configuration will appear on the screen. So essentially this is what I'm seeing on my console screen which told me what the IP address was, etc. It tells us the URL for the Plex Media Server that's available. Uh, it tells us the URL for the PlexB uh, Statistical Python Interface URL that's available. It tells us where we can access our web tools and it also tells us where we can reach the, the own cloud server. Alright, so when the Raspberry Pi initially boots, the, um, the micro SD card is not fully utilized. Uh, as you can see here, I have a 2.3 gig micro SD card according to what my current space is, which is not true. So our first step is to resize the file system 
so that it can fully utilize the space on the micro SD card. We do this by typing raspy config. Raspy config. All right, we'll use option seven. We'll use option one to expand. We agree. We tab over to finish and we enter yes for reboot. Give the Raspberry Pi a couple of seconds to reboot and then we restart the session. see uh, the full space is now available of the micro SD card all right we can now utilize the URLs available to access our Raspberry Pi so the first step we can do is to copy that URL open up a new tab paste that in As you can see, um, our Plex Media server is available. Let's return to our session. The next available URL for the Plexp interface server. Let's copy that. Open a new tab. Paste that in. As you can see, Plexp is installed. Uh, to upgrade Plexby one would just uh, check for updates and if there's an update you click OK and it will automatically update itself. Alright, let's head on back to our party session. The next one is web tools. Let's open up a new tab. Alright, there's web tools uh, ready and waiting. One merely enters a new password uh, and it it's one, two, three, four, five, six as an example. Once one is logged in, you can then utilize uh, web tools. Uh, let's go to the unsupported app store. While that's loading, let's return to our party session. As you can see, the own cloud server is available in this URL. Let's copy that. Let's open up a new tab and paste it in. Right, the first time that you access own cloud, you will have to create an admin account. There is no default account. One can create what you like. For purposes of this example, we're only going to use admin with a password admin. Additionally, if you have a preferred MySQL or Maria database or a PostGRE SQL database, you can use it, but the default is SQLite, which is available on the same image. Uh, just ensure that you've chosen these and create your new username and password. And click Finish Setup. Alright, while that's setting up, let's return to Web Tools. As you can see, we have found a number of um, unsupported App Store um, links, Couch Potato, EPG, Export Tools, etc, 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 etc. One can now install directly. Let's return to Own Cloud. Once our own cloud loads, <coughs> it will give you a greeting, screen, a greeting screen announcing that you can use or get apps to sync your files with your, uh, with your own cloud server. We can close off the greeting screen message and we're left with two default folders. I'm going to move web tools over, I'm going to move Plexby over so that we have Plex Media Server and own cloud side by side. Now the idea is to uh, one can um, 
one can create a number of folders but to uh, install media but before we do that let's go and make sure that we fix the file upload size so if we go into admin and we scroll down currently you can see current maximum upload size is 513 meg um, we've prepared a little script to fix that for us let's just backspace our previous commands do a listing please run the fix upload file size script which will fix your upload uh, file size and automatically reboot the Raspberry Pi so let's minimize that as you can see the request uh, failed uh, that's because the Raspberry Pi is rebooted additionally Plex will go to a greeting screen because the Raspberry Pi is booted let's just give the Raspberry Pi a few seconds alright we're back up and running let's check that those settings have applied as you can see we're now back up to 16 gig one can safely upload 2 gigabytes there is a hard there is a hardware limit on a 32-bit operating system um, one would then use the own cloud app uh, in order to overcome these file size restrictions alright let's head on back to our files let us create a new folder called Plex Library. Once you've created Plex Library, um, I'm going to add a folder. Mm, let's call it Movies. Let's do capital M Movies. The idea is that we create a uh, structure which Plex will access and synchronize to. So in movies, let us go and let's choose a, a small movie. Let's open that. Now, this media is uploading to the Raspberry Pi using Wi-Fi. Um, so we are going to be dependent in terms of some speed issues, as opposed to having a hardwired connection. All right, let's return to Plex. Let's go back to the home screen. Alright, one needs to head over to the server settings um, to transcoding. And please ensure that you set transcoding directory. If you've mounted additional storage, one can also use that as a temporary transcoding directory. Let's uh, save those changes. Let's go to network. Please be sure to include the network that you are using to access your Raspberry Pi as a security feature. All right, let us wait until this uh, let us wait until this movie has uploaded. Alright, once the uh, media or movie has uploaded, it will become visible. Let us access it. available let us head on over to Plex and now we're going to add a library to that movie folder so we click add library movies give it a custom name if you wish next browse for your media folder on your root var folder www own cloud um, this will be the data directory if you've created a user here the user will then appear click the user select the files you remember we created Plex library 
movies and add. So our full path is visible here bar www own cloud data admin files plex library and movies. We now add the library. As you can see it scans the media library and we have visibility of the movie we have just uploaded in own cloud. Once the media is loaded, it becomes visible. Uh, let's just view the artwork. Alright. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, so let's just test that it actually plays. Uh, let's play the uh, video. Okay, that works quite successfully. Uh, let's head on back to the home page. All right. Ideally, if one deletes this uh, video file in own cloud, it should remove it from uh, Plex Media Server. All right, let's continue to Plexi. Let's go to the home page. And as you can see, we had recently added uh, Rio as a movie. Again, all the metadata would be added and the libraries would be available. At this stage, there won't be many graphs and statistics as we haven't, um, we haven't really utilized it at this stage. The last part of the demonstration, uh, we're going to cover the custom menu that is included in the image. Let us return to the Raspberry Pi and we type main menu. The network configuration allows you to uh, configure the Ethernet as well as the wireless uh, adapter on the Raspberry Pi in AP or client mode. If you wish to install a DNS or DHCP server on your Ethernet port and IP forwarding masquerading if you'd like to turn your Raspberry Pi into a hotspot and one of its adapters are connected to an internet facing network connection. You can also restore your network configuration to the, uh, the uh, factory default which is quite handy if you get a little bit mixed up with network configurations. The next is the media configuration. Here we can add USB drives, uh, NTFS, uh, flash, uh, flash memory drives or external USB drives and we can also mount network attached storage, uh, uh, window shares, etc, etc. Alright, the last one is the Plex configuration. Here we can upgrade Plex Media Server version. So when new versions of Plex Media Server are released, one can use this to then upgrade the Plex Media Server version. There is a separate video on our website on how to do this in more detail. Alright everybody, this concludes the uh, demonstration video. Thank you for watching.